Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 28 to 30 of the Algebra 2 Trig Regents exam for January 2015. All right, let's take a look at problem 28. It reads, if P and Q vary inversely and P is 25 when Q is 6, determine Q when P is equal to 30. One thing you want to note is that when two quantities vary inversely, that basically means that as one quantity increases, the second one decreases. As a result of this, their product will always be constant. Now, these are the steps we're going to use to solve this problem. First of all, we're going to set up an inverse variation statement, okay, just to help you see what it means when two quantities have an uh, inverse relationship. And then we're going to declare our constant of proportionality. We're going to call it k. You could call it any variable you want. Now with the uh, k, we're going to set up an equation, all right? And then our equation will involve the use of p, q, and k, the first ones, okay? Because we're given initial values for p and q here. We'll use those two with our k. And then after that, we're going to use that equation to find k. And then we'll use k and the second p-value to find what q is, all right? Okay, let's go ahead and do this. So step number one, let's set up our inverse um, variation statement. If p varies inversely with q, this is how you write it. p varies inversely with q, 1 over q, okay? So this shows you that as q gets bigger, p gets smaller. Okay, as P gets smaller, Q gets bigger. Okay, that's the inverse relationship there. All right, so let's declare our variable let K equals the constant of proportionality. So whenever you multiply these two inverse, uh, inversely related quantities, you always get that K uh, value, all right? So using, with that in mind, we're just going to set up an equation. We can, there are two ways you can write it. This is how I normally like to write it. P equals K over Q. Or you can, you can say PQ is equal to K. And then divide both sides by Q, and then you get um, P is equal to K over Q. All right? I just like to put the K on top, the Q on the bottom, indicating an inverse variation. And then you change your inverse relationship symbol to an equality symbol. All right? So that goes um, the first step. Now, what we're going to do is we need to find what k is because that's a constant of proportionality. That can help us find any q given a p or any p given a q. All right? So let's go ahead and um, do step two. We want to set up an equation. We know that the first p... Uh, Let's call it P1, okay? The first P was 25. The second, the first Q, let's call that Q1, was 6. So if P is 25 and Q is 6, what is K? Uh, K is question mark because we don't know what it is yet. Let's go ahead and solve for that. We'll plug this into this equation. We have 25 equals K over 6. Okay, this is an algebraic equation. We can solve this by simply multiplying both sides of our equation by 6. Okay, so this implies that k is equal to 150. Okay, now let's advance to step 3. We know what our constant of proportionality is. So the question um, is, what is uh, q when p is 30? Okay, so um, we're going to set up another equation and solve for Q. So now we are de dealing with another P. Let's call that P2, okay? P2 is 30, the second P. What is K? K is always constant regardless of what the values of P and Q are. That's why it's called the constant of proportionality, okay? What is Q2? What is the second Q? What is the value of Q when P is 30? That's what we're looking for. We don't know, okay? So we're going to use our equation again, our nice little um, inverse relationship equation. P is equal to K over Q. In this case, we're going to be using the twos. 
If we substitute, we're going to have 30 equals k is 150 divided by q2. All right? Now, how do we solve an equation like this? Well, we can uh, cross multiply and multiply both sides by q2. Let's multiply both sides by q2. So we're going to have, um, this implies that uh, 30 times q2 is equal to 150. How do we finish this off? We want q2 isolated, so we basically divide both sides by 30. And that tells us the value of q when p is um, the value of 30. So q2 <coughs> is equal to divide by 10, the zeros cancel out, 3 goes into itself once, 3 goes into 15 5 times, Q2 equals 5. All right? So our answer is option, oh, actually, this is a free response question. I'm sorry. So there goes our final answer. Q2 is equal to 5. All right, let's take a look at number 29. It says express in simplest form. So we have this equation, this expression right here. <clears throat> 36 divided by x squared over x plus 6. Quantity squared divided by x minus 3 over x squared plus 3x minus 18. So one thing you want to notice is that anytime you're dividing a number by a fraction, let's say you're dividing 5 by a fraction 1 half, it's the same thing as uh, multiplying that number by the reciprocal of the fraction. Okay? This is, this is exactly the same thing. So, uh, dividing 5 by 1 half is the same thing as multiplying 5 by the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2 over 1. So, it's easier to work with this than something like this. This looks messy, but this looks excellent because you can just simply multiply across and get 10. So, that's something you want to keep in mind. Now, the steps we're going to use for this problem. First of all, we're going to multiply the algebraic fractional numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator because we are dividing by a, um, an algebraic fraction here. So we're going to use this idea, but um, applying it to an algebraic situation. So we're going to multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. Okay, just reciprocate that, top, bottom, top, bottom. And then, in step two, we'll factor out all our expressions and we'll divide out common factors. All right? Okay, so let's go ahead and um, get started with that process. <coughs> so the original problem, we had 36 minus x squared divided by the quantity x plus 6 squared. And that divided by... Um, the denominator, which was a, an algebraic fraction. We had x minus 3 over x squared plus 3x minus, uh, let's see, minus 18. Okay, so what we'll do is, it's called drop change flip, okay? That's an, uh, an easy way to remember it. You take the numerator and just bring it down. You keep it. The numerator, it could be a fraction or not. You change your division to a times, and you reciprocate the denominator. Okay, so it's now going to become x squared minus 3x minus 18 divided by x minus 3. Okay? All right, now we're going to start to factor. Oh, there's a square here. We're going to start to factor every single term. This is a prime Binomial, we don't have to bother with that. Let's take a look at this first, 36 minus x squared. Now, do you remember uh, the difference of squares? The difference of squares uh, formula. The difference of squares formula can be used to factor this binomial here. This is the difference of squares formula. a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b, all right? You root the first and the last, and you find the sum and the difference of their square roots. That's exactly what we'll do here. We'll root this and that, and find the sum and the difference of your square roots. So that's going to yield the factored state of 36 minus x squared. So let's see what that is. We have uh, 6 plus x times 6 minus x. 
all right, applying the difference of squares formula. Um, okay, let's go ahead and expand the denominator. It's x plus 6 squared, so we just write it in this form, x plus 6. We're not expanding it all the way. x plus 6 times x plus 6, all right, times, now let's factor this using the x game. This is easy to factor because you notice that a is 1. So if a is 1, all you need to do is simply find two numbers that multiply um, to give you negative 18 and add to give you negative 3. Okay, this is the AC method. A is 1, 1 times C, which is negative 18, goes on top, and then B goes on the bottom. Okay, so let's see. 6 times 3 gives us 18. What if we put there, um, let's see, 6 and 3? In order for the sum to be negative, the bigger of the two has to be negative. Okay, so that's um, the factored form right there. Okay, before I proceed, a real quick correction. Um, <coughs> We have this is plus, so this is plus right here. That should be a plus. So that changes our B to a plus. So let's make this right here, make this a plus. I don't know how the sign changed. Okay. All right, now let's look at our X game again. Make, we have to make sure that the signs work perfectly, okay? So we want the sum of these two numbers to be 3 and the product to be negative 18. In order for the um, sum to be positive, the bigger has to be positive and the smaller negative. All right, so that's that right there. Okay, so here we're going to have x plus 6 times x minus 3. That's the factored form of the numerator, all right, divided by x minus 3. So here we have x minus 3. And then uh, we just reduce, okay? Divide out common factors. So x minus 3 goes here 1, x minus 3 goes here 1, x plus 6 goes here 1, x plus 6 goes here 1. Now take a look at this. 6 plus x and x plus 6, are they the same? Does addition commute? The answer is yes. Addition commutes. Only uh, division and, <coughs> and uh, subtraction, those are the two operations that are not commutative, okay? So since these two are the same, we're just going to divide them out nicely. And then our final answer will be 6 minus x, okay? So that is the result for number 29. All right, let's take a look at problem 30. It says solve e to the 4x equals 12 algebraically for x round it to the nearest hundredth, okay? So one thing you want to note is that the inverse of the exponential function is the logarithmic function of um, the base of the base of the exponent, okay? Uh, steps we're going to use for this problem, first of all, we are going to eliminate the exponential function using natural logarithms since this is e, this is log base e, and, I mean, this is E, so log base E is ln, the natural logarithm. Uh, we're going to use that to basically eliminate this exponential uh, nature of this function. And then we'll have a linear algebraic equation, a simple algebraic equation that we can solve um, in just one step, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, we have E to the 4x equals 12, so log base E is ln. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the natural logarithm. We're not multiplying, okay? Take the natural logarithm of both sides of the equation, like that, equals the natural logarithm of 12, okay? And then we're going to use a, a property of logarithm. These are inverse functions, so they both cancel each other out. And then you're going to have 4x equals the natural logarithm of 12. All right, now to finish this problem off, it's just a straightforward algebraic equation. We'll divide both sides by 4. 4 goes here 1, 4 goes here 1. You have x equals the natural logarithm of 12 divided by 4. All right, 
this is the exact answer. We are asked for an approximate answer. So you just basically plug this into your calculator. I'm going to use a Windows calculator here. Pardon me. Um, so natural logarithm of 12. There you go. Divide that by 4. So 6, 2, 1, 2, 2. So is approximately... 0.621226 we're asked to round to the nearest hundredth okay so rounding to the nearest hundredth this is the tenth place this is the hundredth place so rounding to the hundredth place so the number behind is not five or greater so we don't round we just keep it the way it is we just truncate everything after the two so our final answer is 0 0.62 to the uh, nearest hundredth, okay? So um, in this problem, if you make a rounding error, like you round up, you're going to lose a point. So you have to be really careful to make sure that you round your answer correctly. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. Um, if you found this um, tutorial beneficial please give us a thumbs up so we can get that positive feedback um, if you have any questions or like clarification on any questions here or on the algebra 2 trig regions in general just place a comment in the comment section below and we'll be glad to address it as early as possible don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder of this review series more clips can be found on mathcutserve.com on the test prep Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.